Oke, okay, um, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, welcome to the Social Cognition Course. So this is the first um, meetings, um, and I'm going to uh, present you the video of the material, so you could uh, so you could uh, watch it on your own, yeah, uh, in in a more flexible way. Uh, so the first uh, topic that we are going to discuss in this uh, in this course involves the introduction to social psychology. So it, this is essential because uh, social cognition itself, it's actually a part of the introduction to social psychology. So the reason why uh, we choose to uh, separate uh, introduction to social psychology into three different courses is that uh, so the students would uh, find it easier to digest uh, the, those complex theories. So we try to group uh, those concepts and basic theories into three different domains so you could uh, find the um, the similarities between these concepts right so for th this first meeting uh, we're going to discuss the uh, a bit of the introduction a bit of introduction to social psychology what makes it uh, different from other subdisciplines in psychology and how it it would impact your uh, your studies when you decide when you already decide to learn psychology as your major um, so the first thing is that uh, defining what social psychology is yeah so basically when you choose to learn psychology it means that you uh, try to investigate the behavior of the human so behavior would be the main object the main subject yeah, the main subject matters that we uh, that we concern when we learn when we learn about psychology but not only observable behavior, we also concern on the underlying process, a more unobservable underlying process that cause or uh, being impacted to, uh, by behavior. Yeah. So we this is why we define uh, psychology is a is a science. When we learn about thoughts and feelings as an underlying process or a mental process that determines our behavior. But when we, when it comes to social psychology, then we put social uh, as an aspect that enrich our understanding, because uh, we could not deny that our behavior is heavily impacted by the context. Yeah. So social situation or social context would um, explain a lot why uh, some people would behave differently when they face to a different, uh, when they face the the same stimulus. So the social situation itself, so what it actually means by uh, when, I, when I say social, what it actually means is that uh, social situation uh, is that it, it not only involves, it does not only involve uh, the idea of, of having an actual interaction, in-person uh, in, in person, uh, interaction, when you uh, feel the presence of others and other could also feel the pres uh, your presence as well and then you inter uh, directly interact interact with uh, with other people yeah so it, of course that would be uh, a social uh, context yeah because you feel the presence of others and other can feel your presence as well and you have a direct interaction with each other yeah so that would be a social context but when uh, you feel when you imagine or implying a presence of others it doesn't mean that uh, if you, uh, social situation, uh, situ so social situation requires uh, the presence of others. Yeah. So if you only imagine the presence of others, or implying that someone else uh, present, yeah, or impacted your behavior, then it will also counts as social situation. So for example, if I'm currently making a video, a lecture video, uh, I would, I, I will also, I'm, I'm also imagining that you. Uh, observing that you're now observing my behavior as well so it also counts as a social situation even without a direct or actual uh, or actual interaction so that's what makes social psychology uh, quite unique compared to other subdisciplines and as we know that it's almost impossible yeah it's almost impossible for us to have a moment where we are completely isolated isolated from the social situation it's almost impossible to uh, for us to do that uh, then we could realize the importance of studying social psychology as a part of your uh, journey yeah 
because it's almost impossible. Yeah, it's um, it's almost impossible for us to imagine, uh, uh, to imagine how or when our behavior is completely separated from the social context or the social situation. And that is why some people would say that if you learn, uh, if you want to learn psychology, then you could not leave. Uh, that you could not leave uh, social psychology apart. Yes, yeah, so you need to also learn social psychology because that it gives you some kind of explanation why people would uh, would behave or think or feel in such ways uh, because we believe that those uh, processes would be impacted by social situation. Right, so in this part, I'm going to give you a more broad picture about the relationship between social psychology with several other subdisciplines in psychology, uh, not only subdisciplines in psychology, but also several other disciplines, completely different disciplines. Um, because, of course, um, there is no uh, way that those disciplines are not interact interact with each other. Because we actually, we we of course, um, it's a, we are studying a very complex uh, phenomena, and it's impossible to approach and understand those complex phenomena by only use uh, one or two subdisciplines yeah so we need to uh, so scientists across disciplines need to work together as a team so in this case social psychology is very closely related to economics for example as you may have heard things like behavioral economics uh, because of course uh, social psychology concerns on finding out how people making decision all the time so we're also actually interested in finding out how people cooperate with each other in a group and how we allocate resources of a group uh, and then how we uh, resolve conflict for example and how we decide which uh, which uh, products to buy and also how we behave uh, when we get discounts when you're trying to browse some of uh, some of interesting stuff in the marketplace for example so it concerns on how how we decide things and this is why social psychology uh, is quite close uh, closely related with economics in this in the sense and of course social psychology is always related with the normal individual psychology because we also even though uh, social psychologists believe that a social context does matter we also trust we also believe that individual differences would also explain why people would behave differently even though they are in the same social phenomenon and in the same social context so we also uh, we also uh, take individual differences into account so personality differences or age differences or generational indifferences and and other topics that you would find interesting in in later course and talking about social context we could not separate it with uh the, the belief system yeah the belief system the, the the value system that also influences how we behave and how we respond to, to to certain stimulus so that's why social psychology is also related with social anthropology because it concerns on how culture would impact uh, human behavior and how actually human behavior collectively form something that we call culture or belief or value system that would be also interesting because you 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 to my knowledge that you're also taking a social uh, anthropology course uh, in the same semester so it would also concerns on how uh, a culture or other belief system would affect our behavior and talking with social psychology <laughs> we cannot separate ourselves with uh, the idea of collectivism of this uh, what happens in so sociology the study uh, the study of social aspects of the of the humans how people cooperate with each other and also uh, how power relation or power imbalance would produce things like inequality or injustice and how we explain social process as a part of uh, a social process that could affect individual uh, level uh, processes uh, that will be also interesting to see how sociology and social psychology interact uh, and uh, those interaction basically produce quite interesting uh, school of thought in psychology that we call collectivistic school of social psychology I will explain uh, about that later in, 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 in other videos and uh, other than sociology we also closely related with 
uh, social linguistics and uh, they did the studying uh, they the 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 study of language and communication because most of psychological phenomena are unobserved in nature we could not observe it directly yeah such as motivation or personality it's all uh, uh, unobservable phenomena and it could be only observable by verbalizing those phenomena using language and even some psychologists believe that uh, psychological uh, phenomenon or psychological constructs only exist in language so if you want to study psychology then then you need to also study how human use language yeah so in social psychology there is a more specific subdisciplines uh, that concerns on this matter that we call discursive uh, psychology this, this is quite interesting as well and other than that we also closely related with cognitive psychology yeah so this is why you learn uh, social cognition yeah because we are interested in learning how people actually process information and how those process would affect uh, our uh, perception about our world and also how we behave uh, towards the stimulus yeah and there is also a growing field in psychology that we call social neuroscience we try to look for the uh, biological basis of uh, certain social behaviors such as prosociality so what makes people more generous than the others or maybe they uh, there is um a behavioral uh, explanation why some people would be more uh, generous than the others or why people are more aggressive than the other uh, we then you could um, use uh, uh, the wide range of literature in in social neuroscience and there are some topics that would be covered in social psychology uh, so and we also arrange uh, those topics uh, according to its domain yeah so uh, one domain would be one course so the first course that you're uh, that you're now uh, that you're now are taking is social cognition so we're concerned on why people tend to develop stereotypes yeah why people reduce the complexity of an individual into a very simple a few simple traits for example if you we believe that one person is unique and complex on its own yeah their, their personality is complex their uh, learning process is complex their cognitive process itself is complex but when you know that someone is a Japanese for example then you could easily reduce those complexities into several only a few traits for example that you tend to see a Japanese as being not not assertive or being too slow when talking or rarely straightforward or they might be more feudalistic when they maintain their uh, when they maintain relationship with others or stuff like that so that would be also interesting we're, we're, we're going to cover that in this course and secondly we're going to study about attitudes why people likes things and doesn't like things <laughs> other things and how we develop those knowledge and how those knowledge about uh, about uh, uh, about attitude would affect our behavior as well yeah and other things that we learn in social cognition itself how we produce knowledge about ourselves and how we form our identity and how we present ourselves uh, to other people and what makes us unique and stuff like that i think that would be also interesting and we're going to cover that after the midterm yeah midterm exam after that after the midterm and there are many more yeah, many more topics that you will that that i'm certain that you'd find it uh, quite interesting as well and the second domain that you that you're going to uh, that you're going to learn in as a part of your as a part of your education uh, that would be the, the the concept of social interaction and the the relation between groups between social groups and in that uh, in that topic that you're going to learn about discrimination why people why we tend to uh, treat people differently uh, based on their social groups uh, for example you would be more uh, you would be more kind kinder to uh, to someone who belongs to the same social groups as you are maybe if you are muslim you feel more comfortable with other muslims uh, instead of you know doing uh, if, instead of interacting with other people from other religious groups for example so why discrimination exists and how to actually reduce that so you're going to learn that in 
in, in, in the second part of the Introduction to Social Psychology course. And other topics that would be covered as well, of course, romantic relationship, how people developed uh, attachment uh, and how they uh, uh, how they fall in love, for example, and how they maintain a romantic relationship and what happens after uh, the relationship actually breaks down. Yeah, so that's also a very interesting topic that you're going to learn in a social interaction course. And other than that, you're going to learn about how a different social group interact with each other and how the group members actually internalize their social identity and how those social identity overlaps uh, over another. And that would be also interesting as well. Uh, and other than that, you're going to learn about aggression, why people behave um, quite horrible to one another, why they have a tendency to distract and harm other people. That would be the uh, topic that that you you're, that you're going to learn in social interaction course. And the last part would be the social influence and the group dynamics, and this is quite interesting as well. You're going to learn why people would uh, would obey, yeah, would obey an author, uh, an authoritative figure. Uh, why we choose, uh, why we see someone as an authoritative figure, and why we could not uh, resist. Yeah, we could not resist uh, the uh, the force of being of obeying those authoritative figure. And compliance, yeah, uh, other than uh, obedience, we also learn about compliance, why people comply to other people's requests. Even we, even sometimes we could, we don't, uh, we don't, we are not completely co conscious that we are complying other people's requests. <laughs> yeah. And uh, apart from that, we're, we're also uh, learning about conformity, why people tend to change their opinion uh, change their behavior, adjusting themselves to the group norms. Yeah, so they, so they will, they would feel um, belong to uh, they, they 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 belong to a certain group. So they 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 feel the urge to adjust themselves to adjust themselves uh, to the group norms. Yeah, that we call conformity, and how people resolve conflicts and 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 so on. And you're going to learn that in the uh, social influence course that you're going to take next semester. And a little bit of history of social psychology. Um, so basically, the first uh, phase of social psychology started uh, in 18th century, yeah, approximately. So the famous psychologists that uh, that you might also encounter in in other courses, such as the history class, uh, you're going to be introduced to someone called Wilhelm Wundt. You're from Germany. So he is very prom. He was very. He is very prominent of as a founding father of 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 of, of the scientific version of uh, of psychology. So psychology, even though we had a long history, a long past, but actually we were considered. We first uh, started considered as a scientific disciplines. Uh, it was back in 1879 where. Wilhelm Wundt built the first psychological laboratory in, in in Leipzig in Germany. So he was also the uh, the person who was responsible to introduce the effect of culture, the effect of collective mind. So he does not he did not only believe that uh, that that human psyche uh, is structured in, in his structure uh, structuralism of theory, but he also believed that. Uh, that human psyche, that human psych, that human psychological processes also consisted of something that he called collective mind. So we share similarities, we share the same process with other people. Yeah. So this is the first our initial idea of of, of the social uh, of, of of social psychology. Yeah. So we believe that there is also a degree of collectivity, a degree of collectivity in our in our. Uh, in our as a part of ourselves yeah and the second phase of the development of social psychology is that the increasing number of experimental studies yeah so experimental methods plays an important role in the development of social psychology because the major and core theories in social psychology 
were developed using experimental method. So this is very essential and core. Uh, we could see that uh, we could say that uh, this is a very important uh, ways, yeah, a very important way to obtain knowledge, yeah. So we built our theories mostly using uh, this experimental method. So the first experimental method in social psychology is the one that was conducted by Norman Triplett in the U.S. So he he actually he studied the effect of others' presence to one's performance. So he examined, so he compared a cyclist performance when the cyclist uh, when the cyclist uh, do the cycling alone and when the cyclist do, did the competition with other uh, cyclists and he found out that the performance of the cyclist would be increased would increase would be better much better when they compete with other cyclists rather than uh, rather than when they cycle when they cycling alone so this is the first notion for the first idea of social facilitation it means that the presence of others would affect our own performance yeah and other than that, uh, the idea of measuring attitudes, yeah, uh, would be uh, uh, it would uh, that uh, it it was popular at that time, yeah. So you might uh, you might have encountered uh, a, a psychological scale, yeah, a psychological scale measuring certain uh, psychological constructs when you were presented by a number of statements then you need to indicate yourself whether you agree to that statements or disagree with that statements yeah so we we call that a likert scale yeah a likert scale and it was firstly used to measure attitudes but now we also use that to measure a lot of psychological constructs and you're going to learn how to use that in one specific course that we called a psychological measurement that would be very interesting as well so it was firstly used to specifically measure attitude, but now we we use it to measure a lot of psychological constructs other than attitudes. And other influential studies at that time was the group dynamics, yeah, the, the notion, the idea of how people interact within the groups. And this uh, theory uh, is prominent, yeah. It was it was firstly coined by, uh, by Kurt Lewin, a psychologist from a psychologist from German. From Germany, and you're going to learn about the low-end constructs. I think it is more. I think it, if, it's, if it's if it's if if I'm not mistaken, you're going to learn that in the social influence course and group dynamics. Yeah, and um, there is also a I would say region uniqueness. I would say yeah, when we talk about the history of social psychology. So if you look at studies produced in the North America and studies that, is, that are produced uh, in uh, Western Europe, there are quite a lot of differences there. Yeah. So in North America, social psychology would form as a more like uh, more behavioral, a uh, behaviorism uh, influence. There are lots of behaviorism influence in, in, in the North American version of social psychology. So you would see a lot of experimental uh, experimental studies there and it's a bit more reductionistic some people would say some critics says that it leaves out the social part of the social psychology but in the uh, Western Europe uh, some people would try to combine social psychology with sociological theory so we try to um, to to give a more nuance to uh, social nuance to social psychology so they they try to inject more social aspects or social process to social psychology so this is why two prominent theories two important theories were born in in western europe those are the social identity theory and also the social representation theory both theory you're going to learn both theory after the uh, midterm and those theories are extremely important and influential in understanding how people develop their identity in social contexts and the last part of our history topic is social psychology after the after 2011 yeah there is a major there was a major turbulence in social psychology before uh, 2011 it is when uh, it was when the social psychologists did their research carelessly uh, some prominent social psychologists were caught 
of doing fraud of serious fraud uh, uh, when they conduct their research and it raised it has it has raised a lot of skepticism about the validity of social psychological theory some people even questions further whether social psychology is a scientific discipline or not because it seems that the social psychologists they don't they don't really serious about their research so that their findings are most likely questionable and we don't we can't trust findings that does not uh, that does not uh, they do not come from a rigor and transparent research so that's why people after 20 uh, 2011 social psychologists try to reform how they do research by doing uh, by doing their research more transparently so this is why open science uh, movement uh, plays its role in reforming how social psychologists uh, do their research and the question is a very interesting question is actually is social psychology scientific uh, do we believe that we're we're actually learning a scientific disciplines here? Yeah. So ideally, it is scientific. Ideally, um, I'm not talking about uh, the reality, but ideally, it should be scientific because mostly uh, social psychologists use scientific logic and method to test their theory, to to develop their theories, and also to test their theories. Yeah. So without scientific method, we could not consider a knowledge or a or a discipline a scientific yeah so we test theories uh, on the basis of scientific logic which means that we're trying to uh, seek the coherence or the co correspondence or the relation between our theory and reality so good theories or valid theories would be supported by real evidence so without real evidence you cannot have real theories I think that's very basic and and that's quite common sense. And so just what, psych, what social psychologists normally do is that we develop hypotheses and then we collect data to confirm or to disconfirm our hypothesis. And then we try to conclude whether a certain theories would make sense or we should leave out that, uh, that theory. Yeah. And so that, in that case, we could see that social psychology is a scientific discipline because we adopt scientific method. And but then there is also lots of questions about how we do our research so that we could completely sure that social psychology is actually a scientific discipline. Now, in that case, uh, in the next video, I'm going to explain to you what actually uh, social psychologists do as a part of their research program and how they actually assess how their findings are credible or actually just a nonsensical conclusions. So that would be the end of the first uh, lecture. And I'm going to continue uh, this lecture on the second part when we're talking about the research uh, on social psychology.